Hey, what's going on guys? Here is the finished product of my HGUC painted messer in custom colors and outfitted with some custom weapons and a couple little custom parts on there too. So if you guys missed my work in progress videos on this, you can go back and check those out where I went over the added details that I had basically by adding a couple of little photo etch parts here and there. Uh, adding those little red details that you see dotted around there on the kit went over how to make those in the work in progress videos and then of course I added that big giant giant heat sword as it were actually uh, from simp pro models so first of all uh, thank you to June at sim for sending that to me to check out so that worked out really well for this kit it's actually I believe it's actually supposed to be meant for 100 scale kits most notably the Dom but uh, I wanted to use it here with the master just because the Messer is a very large HG kit and I think it suited it pretty well. I wanted to change up the weapons uh, outfitted here for the Messer instead of just the kind of standard beam rifle and shield that it came with. I wanted to give it something a little bit different and I thought just the giant sword was maybe not quite enough. I wanted to give it something a little bit, uh, you know, just a little bit something extra flair as well too. So I also gave it those grenades. Now if you, again if you saw the work in progress video you saw that those grenades were from a Kotobukiya MSG option set. Uh, really cool just grenades there, it's just kind of a very simple set. And so I just made a very simple little handle for those. And basically the idea behind this is that it's meant to be obviously a uh, kind of close combat uh, version of the Messer there with the giant heat sword. But it's just got the grenades too for kind of the dash in, blow some stuff up, and then kind of mop everything else up with the giant heat sword, that kind of thing. That sort of attack style here for this version of the Messer. And this was a really fun project. It's a really fun kit to work on. Uh, if you guys have not seen my, my original review of the kit of course you can go back and check that out it's a really great kit there was really only a couple of seam lines to fix on it so getting it like prepped for painting was pretty simple there's a bunch of sanding of course uh, but that's simple enough there's basically just seam lines on the back of the arms and then a seam line going around on the head as well I covered how to remove those seam lines uh, both in the end of the review video and then in the first work in progress video uh, respectively and as for the giant sword, just again too, to recap, in case any of you guys haven't seen the work in progress videos, that was actually a resin weapon, and so it's just resin parts, basically you just have to prep and paint those as normal, and so everything on there is just kind of all glued together. Actually, uh, while I was in the middle of doing the final assembly for this kit, I actually dropped that sword and broke the handle, so you can see where, like, on the handle of that, it's got, like, the lines around there, like, where the hands are meant to grip onto there. Actually, one of those segments, it, it broke, it just snapped really clean right at one of those segments, and it's it was fortunately right underneath where the hand is actually gripping that so I was able to fix it basically by drilling a one millimeter hole uh, into the handle and then into like the base and I just inserted a one millimeter aluminum rod in there to basically keep it extra secure and then a little bit of glue on that and it was totally fine basically even if the hand was not holding over that part you wouldn't be able to tell that it was ever broken fortunately but uh, just to hide it even more, the hand is actually covering that part of the handle where that ended up breaking. So just be careful with that. Uh, don't drop it or anything. But it's a really cool weapon. I definitely highly recommend you guys check out some of the custom weapons that you can get there from a Simp. Well, I know we've got some on USA Gundam store, but he's always working on more and trying to get more out to you guys. I know he doesn't have a super high production capacity, so he's not able to make like loads of those. So if you guys see one, you're able to get one or two ones that you think look pretty cool, I would definitely recommend jumping on those uh, while you can. I so say yeah, I'm glad with uh, how I decided to outfit this with some custom weapons there. I think it made it look pretty cool. As for the color scheme, a lot of you guys were pointing out that it looks very similar to the Garadoga color scheme. I guess that's kind of what I had in mind. Basically, I just had it. Uh, I wanted to go for something a little bit more kind of traditional Xeon kind of grunt style looking sort of colors. Actually, I was originally inspired to make it more like just kind of standard Zaku 2 colors, but I decided to make it much more darker, uh, basically omitting the kind of lighter green most uh, that you would see on a standard Zaku 2 and just having it just the dark green. It's actually two shades of dark green. I know that they're not really super noticeable, but I really like that how the two shades of dark green are actually kind of very close to each other. And in the second work in progress video, in the description under that video, I did list the, all the paints that I used. So if you're interested in exactly what colors they were, you can go back and check that out. But the two-tone green, I think, ended up coming uh, coming out really nicely. I really like how that looks. It's really kind of only really noticeable there, like on the arms and in the middle of the torso section on the legs there, the part wrapping around the top of the knees and the darker green like that, for example. Uh, and then the inner frame being in that dark brown color really, really reminds me of the inner frame color of the HG Leo, actually. It's pretty much like exactly that same color is how that ended up coming out and I think it looks good I think it works out pretty well uh, not being kind of your standard gray or gunmetal type of color just being in 
that dark brown I think looks pretty nice with these colors and then the black being of course not actually black just being a very dark gray uh, thing came out looking great as well and the decals I really really wanted to use uh, some of Tim's decals I've been dying to try out uh, some of the child of Mecca uh, slash USA Gundam store decals that Adam sent to me there. Those are the ones that are designed and kind of produced by Tim. They're Child of Mecca. I got a bunch of those that were sent to me and I've been waiting to try them out and I wanted to try them out on this kit but with the colors I didn't want to do all white decals. I thought it would be too bright against the dark colors and then like the dark gray ones were too dark they would be completely lost so basically I needed light gray decals and the only light gray decals that I have on hand were just some decals there from Haikyuu. Uh, there are a couple of white ones on the weapons basically and then there's a, a couple of white ones on the body basically for just the big logo marking on the shoulder and on the back skirt. Those are also from Haikyuu on decal sets but those are from the, I think they're called like Japan uh, logo, I don't know, something something like that, Japan decals, something like that. Uh, so I used a couple of white ones just there for like the big markings to make those stand out. All the rest of the little caution markings are just in light gray so you can see them there but they're not like really popping out as uh, really super obvious so I really like how those came out as well. And then as usual for the top coat I just used Mr. Color Flat Clear, I think it's number 182 I believe. And it's the kind of flat clear color that I love to use for the final top coat because it gives this really nice satin. It's not super flat, it's a, a little bit more towards satin finish actually for it. It looks really nice, it's super smooth, it dulls the colors quite a bit actually so like the color change from when this is like all gloss coated to now how it looks after the final top coat is actually like a very noticeable difference between that but I usually just really love how that looks. And so yeah just really super pleased with how this came out. It was a fun just simple project. There's just something that I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of time on. Just a few little modifications, just adding a few little bits to it, you know, giving it some custom weapons, custom color scheme just to make it look something a little bit different from the normal messer and you know just have a nice simple HG kit, painted HG kit and I think it came out really nice. I'm really happy with this but as always guys I'm always interested to hear your thoughts on the kit. What do you think about the color scheme, the modifications, all that, you know, good, bad, any critique. I'm always welcome. I'm always open. <laughs> I always say that. I'm always open to hearing your guys' critiques. So let me know what you think about the kit down in the comment section below. How, what do you think about uh, my custom build here of the Messer? Oh, one more thing I guess I should also mention about is the mono eye. I tried to at first actually replace the mono eye with a clear part. What I actually did and like that part there for the mono eye. It's just like this flat part and what I did is I drilled that out and I inserted just a clear like just cut off piece of runner on, in there. What I didn't realize was that, that if that's actually sticking out at all the front face mask won't fit on there so I ended up just kind of having to change that idea. Scrapping making that an actual clear part and what I ended up doing is just using a little circular piece of uh, kind of Aurora sticker. It's an like Aurora film set that I have which is also from Q, which has like a bunch of like pre-cut circles on there that you can pop off and use for stickers on there. They're really hard to apply and they're kind of really hard to get down yet. They're stickers I guess kind of but I found that they really don't stick very well so I actually end up having to glue them down every time so that is a kind of a sticker technically but it's actually glued on there for the mono eye but it works it's very it's like barely visible up in there in the head but you just get that little tiny reflection of that mono eye up in there i think it came out looking pretty good as well too so yeah like i said guys let me know your thoughts on this and uh if you do have any other further questions something that i didn't talk about in this video something other question you have about this build of course feel free to let me know but uh, as always guys thank you so much for watching this video and the work in progress videos again to all you guys who watched commented uh on those i appreciate that and uh, as always guys just thank you for watching liking the video commenting subscribing it all really is very helpful so really appreciate that and until uh, next time guys hope you're all having a great day and i'll see you later bye bye